A stream cipher is a relatively simple and very fast type of encryption algorithm and in this video we're going to take a look at how it works. So most of you watching this video will probably be familiar with the idea of encryption. So encryption of course means that we have data or information that nobody is allowed to see, only we are allowed to see it and the people we trust. And so what we do is we use an encryption algorithm to make our data unreadable. So we have information and we feed this information into an encryption algorithm, which is the program that does the encryption. We also come up with a secret key, which is basically a little string of text that also goes into the algorithm. And the algorithm then uses this key to encrypt the data in a certain way and turn it into an unreadable mess. And the only way to undo this, to get the original data back from this mess, is if you also have that key. And the key, we of course, we keep that a secret. So only the people who know the key are able to reverse this process. Now this is called symmetric encryption because we use the same key for the encryption as for the decryption. There is also asymmetric encryption, which uses two keys, but we're not going to talk about that in this video. Now, without further ado, let's take a look at how the stream cipher works. Um, and we're going to do that using an example, because examples are wonderful, of course. So let's say we have a secret message that is 10 bits in size. Right? It's a very small message, but that keeps it nice and simple for this example. Now. The simplest form of stream cipher is called a one-time pad, which uses a key that has the same size as the message we want to encrypt. In this case, 10 bits, right? So we now have our, our data or our message, which is 10 bits, and we have our key that is the same size. And this key is supposed to be completely random. This also means that if our data, if our message would be one gigabit in size, <laughs> our key would also be one gigabit in size. So the key is always as long as the actual data that needs to be encrypted. Then what the algorithm does to actually encrypt the data is it uses the so-called XOR operator. The XOR operator works by taking two bits and comparing them. If two bits are both zero, the outcome of the XOR operator will be zero. If the two bits are both one, the XOR operator will also output a, a zero. Only if one of the bits is a one and one of them is a zero, and it doesn't matter in which order, then the XOR operator will actually output a one. So the XOR operator uh, checks for exclusivity, basically. It sees, is one of the bits a one and one of them a zero? Then I'm going to output a one. And if both of them are the same, then the XOR operator is going to output a zero. That's what it does. And the nice thing about this is that you can't reverse it. So what the stream cipher does is it performs this XOR operation on the first bit, and then on the second one, and then on the third one, and that way it will go through the entire message. So it will XOR the bits of the message with the bits of our key, and that will form our ciphertext, and then we can send that ciphertext over to the recipient. So this is how the one time pad works. And the decryption is very simple. The decryption is just the same thing, but now the other way around. So it works by XORing the ciphertext with the key, and, that get, and, and then we get the original message back. The one-time pad is actually an unbreakable form of encryption. It's, it's mathematically proven that it's unbreakable because the key has exactly the same length as our message, which basically means, imagine this, if you have a text document that is five kilobytes in size and is encrypted with this five kilobyte key, well, it takes you just as long to guess what the key is, to try and guess what the key is, as it takes to guess what the actual contents of the text document are, because the key is just that long. So you might as well just guess what the data is, 
because it takes the same amount of time as guessing what the key is. So that's why the one time pad is completely secure. Of course, since the keys are very large, it's not very practical. And that's why most stream ciphers work in a slightly different way. Most stream ciphers generate this long string of bits based on a shorter key. So what happens is if we have our 10 bit message, we might only have a four bit key. The four bit key goes into a cryptographic number generator and the number generator will then generate a string of bits that is 10 bits long based on this four bit key. So we can have a, a five gigabyte file that needs to be encrypted and we can have a 128 bit key and then the number generator will use this 128 bit key to generate a five gigabyte string of zeros and ones. So this is how most stream ciphers would do the job. Of course, that's not as secure as a one time pad because your key is now much shorter. Another reason why it's not as secure is because sometimes people don't use the right number generator. You need to use a very good number generator for this. You can't just use any very simple off the shelf number generator that comes with, you know, a programming language built in because those number generators aren't random enough. They, they cause predictable patterns and those predictable patterns can be used to break your encryption. So if you're going to do this, if you're going to design your own stream cipher, you do need to use a very good, a very proper cryptographic grade number generator. That is incredibly important. Now that we know how the stream cipher works, we can take a look at some of the, the pros and cons of this type of encryption. First of all, the positive stuff, right? The pros. Why is it good? First of all, it's good because it's fast. It doesn't require any really complicated maths to happen or loads of iterations like some other encryption types. It just happens that fast. This type of encryption can be done in a very short amount of time. It's extremely fast. Then, of course, it's also very simple because, um, as, you've, as you've probably seen, it, it's not very complicated. It's a pretty simple, straightforward type of encryption, which can be an advantage. Something else that's nice about stream ciphers is that the bits in the cipher text map exactly to the same bits in the original text. So bit number nine, in our example, in the cipher text, maps to bit number nine in the original text. So this can be an advantage in some situations where we might not want to decrypt a whole file, we just want to decrypt a small part, then we can simply decrypt those bits because it decrypts every bit independently. So if we don't need to decrypt a whole file but just need to decrypt the last 10,000 bits or something like that, then we can simply go in and only decrypt the last 10,000 bits, which is very nice, of course. It is also a disadvantage. So with encryption, you, you often think that it's just to hide information, but it's not just there to hide your information. It's also there to prevent people from screwing with it, right? You don't want people to modify your information as well. Now, this is a problem with a with a stream cipher because with a stream cipher we saw that every bit in the cipher text maps to exactly the same bit position in our original text in our message which means if it's an automated message sent by a computer system that always has the same format and always has the same things in the same place then someone could get in and change very specific things and we don't want that which is why stream ciphers always have to be combined with additional things, additional systems, you know, hashing algorithms, for example, to make them secure. The main disadvantage of a stream cipher is that the diffusion is very low. What this means is when a villain manages to obtain the original message and also the ciphertext that belongs to that message, it is very easy for him or her to obtain the key. Because the only thing they have to do is XOR the ciphertext with the message, and that gives them the key. So, 
when you're using a stream cipher, you need to be very careful and make sure that a villain or a hacker or anybody else intercepting your messages won't ever know the original text. Well, anyway, there you go. That's what a stream cipher is, how it works, and what its pros and cons are. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and of course, thank you for watching.